Hi everybody and welcome to Mozilla Black Metal Italiano. Today we are going to be talking about Vinternius and their latest album Cultra Nightmares. Hi guys and welcome once again on Museo del Black Metal Italiano, the one and only YouTube channel entirely dedicated to Italian black metal. And this is kind of like the sixth or seventh take I'm doing for this uh, review because there is so much I want to say and so much information I want to pack in a single video and it's not always easy to do so, especially when, when you are not following a script. So, my eyes are going to be moving around quite a lot and I'm not going to be kind of like looking at the camera the whole time and that's because I'm trying to focus as much as possible on what I want to say and you know kind of like making sure that this band and this EP receive the correct support and the deserved support I must say. So let's start from the very beginning. I've received this album not too long ago via Wine and Fog production, an Italian label that has actually pressed this EP for Vinternius in cassette format. I think I've also published a picture of this release in my community section and some of you might have seen it there. So cassette format, totally professional, killer, killer, killer work from this label. Um, the red tape, a uh, bit of an overcover with the, the logo of the label on top, the booklet. Anyways, like really, really nice work from the label and the banding, you know, coming up with like the overall artwork concept, etc, etc. So kudos to that. I received the cassette tape and uh, to be fairly honest with you, I did a bit of research out there asking questions here and there and I've been told that potentially there is going to be also a CD format version of this album coming out maybe before the end of the year. Now I don't know if that's going to be the case but I'm looking forward to it as well. Not because I want to collect the CD format as well but because I honestly think this album deserves uh, a bit of attention and these guys have done like a great job this time around so I really want to have this release in CD format rather than having the cassette format tape that might be you know un unreadable within like a 10 years time so this album of Internews comes out about three years after their debut a debut album that was pressed in CD format by Black Blood production was it? Uh, here no Tears of Death, I don't remember the name. Well, anyways, like the CD format came out a couple of years ago, 2020, for their debut, the full length titled Open the Portal. And these guys, to be fairly honest with you, were not like a new band within the Italian underground. They've been out there for quite a while, especially active with other projects. And the most important black metal projects that these guys were part of back in the days were definitely Sacradis, a band that was kind of like merging within its own sound. A lot of influences from like the Swedish uh, kind of like a black metal vibe. So dark funeral, sepharial oriented kind of black metal, especially during the second half of their career. Whilst, you know, at the very beginning they were more focused on like a late 90s approach to black metal, still with some influences from like the Swedish vibe, uh, but anyways, like a slightly different and totally, totally uh, catchy. Now, they disappear for quite a while and then finally in 2020 they came out again with this new project, Vinternius, great debut album, I think it was one of the best albums of the year. Uh, for us that specific year uh, and well I've been waiting for like a follow-up work for quite some time and finally this year new EP out so what shall we expect from uh, Cultra Nightmares? So Cultra Nightmares is an album that definitely catches the attention of the listener and that's mainly because well these guys have been able to merge within their own sound, not just the late 90s, early 2000 uh, influences that black metal was kind of like displaying or showcasing back then, but also like a sort of like a modern approach to black metal that includes a, a huge amount of melodies, a 
kind of like quite of a clean production in comparison to like the usual raw black metal you might be listening to. And you know, there are some inputs here and uh, that make this release uh, not the usual cup of tea, you know, from riffing to drumming to vocals to a certain extent, etc. etc. So if we want to really label it and give it some terms of comparison, I guess that potentially like a vintage sound could be uh, compared to what the Emperor might have released during the second half of their career with albums such as Ninth Equilibrium or Prometheus, uh, what Enslaved might have done with albums such as Eld and the following ones and what maybe like bands such as Immortal when not might have uh, released with albums such as uh, um, The Earth of Winter. So you know it's like a catchy version of black metal, the production is not really what you could be listening to back in the early 90s but still like you know it's kind of like well rooted into that black metal then so was what was it like a third wave of black metal or whatever like i've lost the count but this is what the sound of Vinternius and especially in this album Kultra nightmares reminds me of now if we go to speak about the band's music well there are some peculiarities definitely that define the band sound in a specific way and that make it like really catchy i mean catchy i guess potentially is the best word to describe the band sound here let's start from the very protagonist of the of the band sound which is like the guitar work so the guitar work here is definitely bombastic there is a good mix of melodic riffs, really well studied rhythmic guitars and as well the inclusion of solos that kind of like exalt the overall guitar work. And getting onto the solos I must say that's potentially the only bit that in this overall release I didn't quite like as much as everything else. But I'm gonna be expanding on this point in a moment. The second most important bit that characterizes the band's sound is definitely the drum work. The drum work is totally outstanding. It's dynamic, so well studied, really really in line with what the guitars are actually offering to the public. And you know, I found it really 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 interesting because it's so capable of moving from like really fast paced parts to mid low tempo bits and it does that in within like seconds like you know in a moment you're gonna have like a really cool strong riff and then like two seconds later there might be like a sort of like a, 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 a slower beat and the drumming is gonna be following through like so well and you know it's so nice to be hearing the combination of the drums and the guitars that can perform so well and that definitely provide the overall experience, the identity the band needs. Now, on a second level, in terms of actors, from a lineup perspective, we definitely find the vocals and then the bass. Now, the vocals are really good. I totally enjoy the vocals. They are kind of like monotone to a certain extent and that's because you know there are some variations there are some moments where the vocals experiment in between like you know the use of choral clean parts and uh, and, and kind of like the rest of it is pretty much like old screaming vocals but the performance is really really good so they are like really interesting they follow through the music in a really nice way they are so well produced and recorded and being a vocalist myself i totally enjoy the performance of the vocals it's kind of like if it wasn't because of the guitar work that is uh, that good i guess potentially the vocals might have covered the the main role in this overall play but I guess like because of the guitar works and because of the drumming and because of the fact that the vocals are pretty much 
using that screaming over and over again. There are really few bits where we find ourselves listening to variations on the theme with like the addition, maybe rolling vocals, etc. etc. But the expressivity, expressivity? Can I say explicit? I'm not sure. Well, well, the way the vocals express themselves is absolutely great, and I really, really, really enjoy that. The bass, I think, like is kind of like there in the background, but it is the instrument that doesn't really shine in the overall mix, and that's because like the bass is there filling the gaps, providing the backbone or uh, to to the guitar work and the drumming but at the same time doesn't kind of like it. comes uh, comes up in the overall mix and production covering an important role or like a, a protagonist role uh, as you know the other instrument uh, do and it's kind of like this the, the, the bass is kind of like the support actor in this play you know it's, it's there in the background it provides the, the correct correct feedback to the overall experience but at the same time isn't quite there on the front and I feel like you know with this kind of guitar work with this kind of drumming with this kind of vocals production I would have liked to hear the bass more on the front but well that's my my personal taste I guess potentially these guys were looking for a different result and there is also the case guys at times you know you might be listening to this album on a computer uh, you might be listening on to a stereo, on monitors, or just like your headphones, and it might be sounding completely different. So, well, I guess, you know, uh, if I might be listening to this album in a different way, the bass might be there, you know, more audible kind of way. I didn't do so, but I've been listening to this album over and over and over and over again, trying to assimilate it and absorb it as much as possible, and I must say that the bass wasn't quite there on the front as I would have liked it to. Now, when I was talking about the solos and saying, you know, the solos are the only bit that I didn't quite enjoy, that's mainly because, well, so the production of the guitars is great. Loved it. You know, the riffing, amazing, and I found it like so good in terms of like variations and the capability of moving from those fast beat to those like a low mid tempos and rhythmic parts and you know the the overall combination of different lines of guitars that is just like great all the way through and i totally enjoy it like in the six tracks that uh, are part of this album if we like five if we take out the, the intro track the guitar work is really really good I honestly found it amazing. Uh, it's like old school and at the same time it's contemporary. Um, there is so much going on with the guitars. It's not just like the usual template where you've got like uh, uh, the chorus here and there and you know the, everything else like around. It's just like really, really good, uh, good guitar work and it's definitely you know like the main important part of this of this album. But at the same time, when we get to the solos, well, the solos that I found in Cultra Nightmares, they don't always convince me 100%. And at first I thought, like, you know, I might need to be listening to this album again and again. Um, and then, you know, listening to it again and again, I still was of the opinion, like, you know, that there is something here that doesn't convince me as much. And that's because, I guess, you know, the parts when the solos actually come through are okay. I mean, definitely consider the structure of the songs. There are parts where you feel like, okay, this is perfect, like, come in with a solo here and nail it. But I just found those solos at times weak. They are not as good as everything else. I think, like, for example, if we take... Uh, the solo on the opening track, Bon, I think that's the, the second track of the album. And we take the solo then on the title track, and that's the third track of the album, Cultra Nightmares. On Cultra Nightmares, that lead solo guitar is absolutely great, but I enjoyed it. If I go to check on Bon, it's kind of like 
it, it loses its appeal and you know the the solo in bond like the drums slow down and they go for like a really i don't know underperforming beat in a way because i mean you got like such bombastic drums and then all of a sudden the drum ring changes and it goes more onto like a almost metal heavy metal approach to the drumming you know keeping the rhythm rhythmic uh rhythm sorry just to get a solo on top of it and the solo comes in and it's just like uh, meh. you know i was expecting something more i was expecting something more and i think like that's the only really thing that i could say didn't quite uh, match my expectations um the solos which is weird you know because i guess from a production like this you might be expecting something a little bit better and to a certain extent you know like i found this album like a, a good eight out of ten but if it wasn't because of the solos like if it was if, if there was going to be like a little bit of extra uh i don't know like uh, attention paid to the solos i think potentially this album would have been like a little bit better uh, and i'm not saying like this album is crap uh, absolutely not like far from me this album is really really good i mean the guy's performance has been absolutely outstanding and it is a really 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 strong record i mean there is not a drum beat out of place there's not like a riff out of place the vocals performance is really good the bass that you know is not present on the front but that's like a point of taste and what the bands want to achieve when they get on to mix, mixing and mastering you know so what I, I hear I don't like maybe somebody else is gonna be listening to it and say wow this is amazing you know but the soul speed was like the only really spot where I kind of like you know for like oh they kind of like let me down here but anyways really cool release really strong six tracks one is an intro and then you got like five really really chunky juicy tracks black metal approaches in between like late 90s early 2000 there is a some contemporary sort of like extreme metal twist to it that can be listened to when you kind of like focus on the riffing or like the vocals etc etc so it's really 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 good the overall packaging of the cassette tape format absolutely outstanding i really loved it like a uh, one and four this kind of like publishing on late like really really good releases and i think like i i, I actually reviewed this album no well, this band this label sorry wow with uh Our christ uh, with uh Ecatonia, and there's going to be more coming from them anyways like i'm in touch with these guys great job they are doing some some really interesting stuff and with Cultural Nightmares, Winter News, well, I think they nailed it. They got a band in the rooster that is doing a great job. I think this is a band that potentially could uh, like conquer a wider public for sure. Uh, I'm not sure if they are like playing uh, live as much, but I think like you know they definitely need your attention now. One of the things that uh, a little bit surprised me is the fact that, for example, this release isn't just yet on uh, Metal Archives, which doesn't mean anything really, because then they are on uh, Spotify and, and like tons of other like, uh, social media platforms and they've been promoted to a certain extent by the label and the band itself just moved in the direction, you know, to promote its music, but I feel like, you know, they really need uh, uh, a better push in terms of promotion to like you know be discovered by a wider public so from this point of view guys i hope this uh, english spoken review might have given you like a little bit of an insight in terms of what the band sound sounds like <laughs> what this album is all about i hope my description of their sound and their latest album Ultra nightmares might have been on of any interest to you and well, if you like what you're going to be listening to, as always, please don't forget to uh, follow the band, buy a copy of this cassette tape, you're going to be finding it through the band's uh, label, or the label that has actually pressed the band, sorry. I'm going to be leaving you the, uh, the name of the band, of 
bands their labels on Facebook so you're gonna be able to eventually to go and like their page and follow them and recover a copy if you want to wait a little bit longer please bear in mind uh, this album might be eventually published in CD format I'm gonna be giving you also the link to the Spotify page uh, from the band side where you're gonna be able to find this album on streaming just in case there is also like a YouTube channel from the band so plenty of space for you to listen to Ultra Nightmares, get your idea around it and well if you like what you're gonna be listening to again just get a copy for yourselves support the band you can find it on digital format again so you got plenty of choice guys so thank you very much for your support as always if you like the channel please like our page start following us Tons of other videos are coming in English and not only in Italian as well. Quite soon we're gonna be starting with a podcast again. There are some other initiatives we are kind of like taking forward in the background. So thank you very much for wasting some time on our channel and I'll see you next. Ciao!